Stevens DIY Auto Repair. All right, guys, and we are back. And we're here in my 2015 Dodge Durango Limited all-wheel drive. We got 177,424 miles on the clock. So guys, you may or may not know, um, at one time before I put a video up. So initially we had a um, underheating issue where the vehicle threw a code for um, basically the engine was not getting up to optimum temperature. And um, monitoring the thermostat, we see that it was not functioning as it should. So we went ahead and just popped in a new thermostat and everything started working fine for a while. One thing I didn't share with you guys is we were taking a road trip and we started getting an overheating issue. And uh, again, monitoring the thermostat, it wasn't opening. So we went ahead and just replaced it. And then we haven't had another issue up until recently. So recently we were getting an overheating issue as well. Again, monitoring the thermostat, the thermostat seemed to be operating or functioning properly. Opening and closing when it should. So long story short, uh, before we could ever actually figure out or diagnose the problem, uh, it did seem like we had a coolant leak. Our coolant reservoir was low, so we filled it up, we topped it off to get us home. Emergency happened. We needed to take the vehicle out and shortly before getting home, we had an overheating issue. We pulled off and what I'm about to say, guys, don't do what I say or don't do what I did. Let's put it that way. So anytime you have an overheating issue, it's very imperative to pull off the side of the road as soon as possible when it's safe. Call a tow truck, have it towed to your local shop or your dealership or even to your home do not drive it so anyway i took the chance and i made the call it's my personal vehicle to go ahead wait until it cooled and then drove it once it started overheating again pulled over and drove it and i did that for about an hour i do not recommend you do that and i suggest you not do that I did it just because emergency situation. I had my whole family with me. Uh, I did not want my family being stuck. So I made the decision to do what I did. Now that I got it, um, I did a quick diagnostic on it. Um, I didn't really bring you guys along for that. I apologize. I just needed to find out what's wrong with it. So anyway, I did find that I... I first thing I did was... Uh, pressurized the system and I find I found that it was dropping pressure really good so there's um, a pretty decent sized leak somewhere problem is upon doing the pressure test I could not find a leak I was thinking the leak was going to stare me in the face that's not the case so I did hear air coming out like if you um, blow up a balloon and you let some of the air come out, that hissing sound. I, I heard a hissing sound coming from the top of the radiator. Now, I couldn't visually see it very well due to the fact the radiator fan, the support bar, all that stuff is in the way. So anyway, couldn't really get a good visual. So what we're going to do now, and I'll bring you guys along for this. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers that I did not blow a head gasket. Um, but what we're going to do is we went ahead and bought a radiator. I'm going to go ahead and take the stuff off basically to get to the radiator, but that's also going to give me a, a better visual of the radiator and where I possibly think it's leaking. I'm about 90% sure that it's going to be the radiator. Another 10% is the head gasket. So basically if I can actually visually see where the radiator might be leaking, we're going to go ahead and continue and replace the radiator. If for whatever reason I can't find a leak, uh, we might stop where we're at and we might do a, a head gasket test. I probably should do that now, uh, but I don't want the vehicle to heat up too much prior to me 
um, opening up the coolant system. So that's where we're at, guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and take you along for the ride. I apologize that I didn't record it overheating or record uh, pressure testing it the other day. But I'm going to go ahead and pressure test it today after we take off um, some items. That way we can get a better visual of the thermostat housing and the coolant system. So anyway, guys, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, guys, so first we're going to go ahead and take off our intake or our air box inlet this right here so you're going to have one fastener here it's going to be a 10 millimeter you have one fastener here it's going to be eight millimeter you're going to take that loose you're going to come over here be sure to disconnect your connector here then you're going to have another 10 mil uh, 8 millimeter here and then you should be able to just go ahead and pull it off so you guys are going to want to take a plastic pin tool like this or a trim tool and come in here and pop all these out so basically you're going to remove this weather stripping you're going to remove this piece And then you're going to remove this other piece here on the side. Same thing, removing all these little plastic push pins or Christmas trees, whatever you want to call them. And that's going to give you access to your radiator support bar that's right here. And we'll go ahead and get these off and bring you guys right back. Now that we got our weather stripping and our panels off, we now have access to our upper support bracket here you want to go ahead and disconnect your hood latch connector here and you might have to disconnect that um, push pin from the frame as well as from there And then on your back side over here, you're going to need to release this push pin for your windshield reservoir because you're going to have a fastener back here you're going to have to get to. It'd be a good thing to disconnect this, your bracket here, and same over here. You need to disconnect this fastener that holds your coolant overflow tank on there. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of this apart and we'll bring you right back. Okay, so your overflow tank, at least on mine, it's gonna be an eight millimeter. And our bracket here is gonna be a 10 mil. Sorry about that guys, I don't think I showed you very well. <laughs> but it's a 10 mil. One fastener. And then you can bring it loose. Pull it out the way. Okay guys, so now I think we're ready to go ahead and take out our top radiator support bar. You're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts on top. You're gonna have one here on the front. Come over here. You're gonna have two on top. One right here in the front. And then you're also gonna have one back here on your backside. And the ones on the sides for, for here, here and here, it's, it's gonna, uh, 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench is gonna come in handy to get back here and get these out. So let's go ahead and take a few of these out. Okay. 
and that's probably boring. Much more efficient. So we're gonna go ahead and take the rest of these out and we'll bring you guys right back. All right guys, so I apologize. I lied. So you, you have one more there. And you have one more fastener right there. They're gonna be 13 millimeter. Those are also your support brackets there. So we're gonna go ahead and take those off and we'll bring you right back once we got it off. Okay guys, so now that you got it out, you can disconnect your horn here. Or you can even just take off the bracket. Same thing with this one here. Um, we're going to go ahead and just leave. We're just going to go ahead and leave those on. You could also take off your hood latch here. Um, and get this out of the way. We might do it, but I think we're just going to fold it over to the side. But that's an option you guys could do. So all you got to do is just basically lift it up. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this out of the way and then we'll bring you right back. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we went ahead and took the bracket off here and we just folded it over just like that. Worked out perfectly. So now we're gonna come down here to our fan shroud. You wanna just disconnect this harness here and then you should be able to just to pop it up. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it. All right, guys, so here's our connector. And on the back side, just push it down and pull out. And then if you notice here, the radiator fan is just kind of set in on those hooks. So all you got to do is just pull up and it should pop out. Uh, one thing to note, it would probably be a good idea to remove your radiator fan before you remove the support bar. That way it gives you something to kind of lean on if you need to without damaging your condenser or your front bumper. So just something to think about. Okay guys, so now that I got the fan out, I can show you this a little bit better. Right here is a clip. So before you can pull the fan out, you're gonna have to push in on this to let the fan be able to release to come up you're going to do this side and then you're going to do the other side as well and then your fan will actually just pop right up so we obviously still have the radiator hoses up or lower connected we're going to go ahead right now pressurize the system and hopefully we could find out exactly where this is leaking so we're going to go ahead and do that and bring you guys right back all right guys, so I don't have a definitive answer here, but it appears we're leaking from this corner somewhere. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know if the camera's picking that up really well, but See it right there. So I think it's uh, dripping internally from the top somewhere, dripping down or lower bottom. I hear a hiss at the top, but this could be residual from when it blew on me. So, but I'm thinking that's where it's at. All right, guys. So we uh, we found our leak. As you can tell by that bubble. So what we did was we sprayed some soapy water. As you can see, bubbles forming. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you hear that hissing. So that was a, that was a pretty good one, guys. We weren't getting any leaks and I could hear hissing. So we used the old soapy water trick. 
and check it out. Indeed, we have a blown radiator. Pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead, remove the radiator, and pop in our new one. So, let's get to it. Okay, so now we're just gonna loosen our petcock down here. And we're gonna drain out the coolant. We've got a bucket underneath to catch it so we can properly dispose of it. So we're gonna go ahead, crack that petcock loose, drain it, and then we'll take off the radiator hoses. So we'll be right back. All right guys, so we got our radiator draining from our petcock. We left our radiator cap off so that it can drain more efficiently. We're gonna finish letting this drain. We're gonna take off our lower and our upper radiator hose. And then we're gonna get this thing out of here. So we're still letting it drain, but we're gonna start removing our upper radiator hose clamp. And this is why I really love this tool from Gear Wrench, part number 82115. The clamp is in an awkward spot and this gets right to it and we'll clamp down and pull it off. Amazing tool. All right guys, so hopefully you can see right there on the left. Bit of focus. So there's these two like clamps you have to clamp together in order to remove the radiator from the condenser. There's one right, let's see if I can get my finger in there. There was one here we released. There's one more down there. It's that left one. Come over here. Same thing on the right. We kind of uh, manhandled this one a little too much, but we could straighten it out. And there was one right there at the bottom, as you can see, that we already did. So it's just two clamps on the on the bottom. You push together, and it releases it. So we're working on this last one down here, and then we'll bring you guys right back. All right guys, so we got our condenser free. You just wanna be careful when you're pulling because at the very bottom, your condenser is sitting on that little leg. And then over here, hopefully you could see it, there's a little notch where the condenser sets. And then at the bottom, there's a rubber grommet that goes inside there, as well as over here. And then now it's just a puzzle piece trying to get it out. Okay guys, so we finally, after some wrestling, got our radiator out. So I was able to literally straight pick it out. That was the best option. Uh, you are gonna have to tug and pull on it, but be gentle, be careful. You don't wanna damage your condenser. And you don't want to damage any of your lines. So this got in the way just a little bit. But we were able to get it out right through here. So especially when you put your new one in. You want to be very careful not to damage the fins. Because then you're going to be in the same boat. So here's our condenser. So now we're going to cross check it with the new one. Swap over any uh, parts we may need. Which uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to need the rubber grommets. And then we're gonna install the new one. So we'll be right back. All right guys, so we finally got our new radiator in. It actually took a couple of days. Um, we had actually ordered the wrong radiator. Um, I might go ahead and take a, put a picture up here for you guys so you guys can see the new one compared to the old one. Um, so yeah, we ordered the wrong one. We had to order the right one. Um, and it took a couple of days to come in. So if you guys, I'm not going to give you guys the part number just yet. Cause, uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you, um, what to look for in order to get the proper radiator 
for at least this vehicle or the the information on how to distinguish which radiator your vehicle vehicle needs and uh i'll probably do a a screen recording for you guys or i'll show you um i'll show you on the website and uh i'll explain more there so if you guys want to know that information go ahead and stay to the end of the video and we'll show you guys all right guys so after two failed attempts um third time is the charm we finally have the correct radiator This one's directly from Dodge. It's gonna be part number 6823-2592, Adam Boy. So this is directly from, this is OEM. It's gonna run you almost just under $800. And at the end of the video, I will explain why and what to look for when getting the radiator for your 2015 Dodge Durango Limited. So stay tuned for that. So we're going to go ahead and get this put in and we'll bring you guys right back. All right, guys, we got our radiator in. Um, it's best to go like this. You're going to have to do some wiggling, pulling and fighting, but you'll get it in. Not too hard. Um, just want to be careful because these are open and uh, I was pressing down a little too hard and messed up a little bit of them but it'll be all right so now we're just pressure testing our system to confirm and uh, we'll get this put back together okay guys so we were, <clears throat> we were getting a small pressure drop but I think it's my tools not sealing very well um, we had to kind of hold it and we sat there holding it and it actually held pressure um so we're gonna go ahead put this back together and see what happens all right guys so we got it all put back together it's basically the opposite of taking it apart so we have some uh coolant here 50 50 uh it's already pretty diluted and we have a new radiator cap There's the part number. Um, so it's important to note that before you install any new coolant components, uh, it's a good idea to flush out the system. It's highly recommended. Um, and most parts that you buy will void the warranty if you do not have the coolant system flushed. So ours is flushed, got it all put back together. We're gonna put in the coolant, burp the system, and see if we have any more leaks or any more issues. So we'll bring you guys right back. All right, guys, so we got it all put back together, refilled it. Uh, we didn't burp out all the air um, because at that point we noticed that we still have a small, a very small drop in pressure, it's consistent. Um, so there is another leak. So we're gonna have to find that other leak, but I've decided um, it's best to go ahead after putting a, a almost $800 uh, radiator in. Uh, it's best. Uh, I don't know the history on this vehicle. I don't know how long some of these parts have been on here or if they've ever been changed. Um, so we're going to go ahead and replace the water pump. Uh, I have a really good feeling that that's where it's leaking. There, I could test it. I could pressure it, pressurize it and look or there's a couple other tests you could do. Um, but regardless, I want to change out the water pump. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to change out the thermostat again. Um, cause I've noticed that the thermostat will not open when it should. And I think that's what's causing the overheating, uh, for the thermostat. We're probably going to have to, well, I would like to get the OEM from the dealership, but those are on back order for a month and um we need to get this car up and running it's been it's been down for over a week now and we got to get it up and running so we're gonna go ahead and end this video here um i don't know if i'll put out a part two or not but i will probably put out the video of changing the water pump 
it's fairly easy um i don't even know if i'm gonna even do a video on that or not just because the, the vehicle's been down for uh almost a week now and we need to get it up and running so we're really in a rush uh i know i've been saying that on the last couple of my videos uh, but i've just really been in a bind got a lot of vehicles coming in trying to get those done as well as uh other stuff so anyway guys uh i'm gonna go ahead and end it there um if we get if we get whatever we find out i'll make sure to let you guys know i'll probably do a small video on what we found out if uh, we replace those parts and we fix the issue or if it's going to be something much worse like a head gasket i'll make sure to let you guys know so uh i'm gonna stop rambling on uh because one viewer <laughs> put a comment say i talk too much so in that note we'll go ahead and end it there so anyway guys that's how you change out a radiator in your 2015 dodge durango all right guys so here we are on AutoZone's website um and here we have our we have the 2015 dodge durango limited all-wheel drive 3.6 liter selected and we have up the radiator fans so AutoZone is not a sponsor. Um, we're just using AutoZone because that's normally where we shop. Um, they are one of a one of they are one of the big chain retailer parts suppliers. So that's what we're going with. Um, so anyway, guys. So normally when you bring when you go in and you look up a part, you get um, several part options or several brand options and then a lot of times sometimes you get uh the the regular standard part or you get a performance part uh, and you can choose your option for the most part and that's kind of what we went based off of uh this this was obviously my fault i uh, should have looked into it a little bit more but normally like i said when you when you come onto a part um a parts website especially from one of these big chain stores or you go in and you ask for a part um, normally you, any part that comes up is the part that's going to fit your vehicle but in this case that was not what happened so let me go through and let me show you what I'm talking about so um, initially we ordered this Duralash radiator B13200 and as you can see, it's got a curved filler neck here. Sorry about that. It's got a curved filler neck here. But on this particular radiator, it was too thin. And then over here, where you have some of your support brackets, it was missing some of the supports for the condenser. Um, and here, this uh, doesn't include, for the notes, doesn't include radiator cap, purchase separately, always change your antifreeze coolant when installing a new radiator, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we could even read more into it and here are some specifications and details so anyway that was the first one we ordered so then we're like okay well we don't need that we need the performance one so uh, the second one we ordered as you can see these two this one has a straight neck so obviously that was not gonna fit and sometimes these pictures are not the greatest guys uh, that, that's another thing that's uh, kind of a uh, upsetting is a lot of these pictures are not very good but the second one we ordered which we still got wrong was this one here it has a curved neck this one was thicker and it was the same thickness as our OEM one the only problem again is these uh, it was missing the proper support brackets and it was a little bit different up top and again, this one just says, note radiator with curved filler neck. So uh, the third option, or the third, uh, the one that should fit your vehicle, and now we got ours from the dealership, but the third one that should fit is actually this one right here, performance radiator 1803 for $569. Now I'll show you why right here. So this one, as you can see, it's got the filler neck. It's got some of the support brackets. This is the one you're gonna need. Um, and I'll show you right here why. I'll show you right here why. 
So notes, radiator models that use R1234YF refrigerant only. So this was our mistake, guys. So our vehicle, if you look where the radiator support bracket is, at least on, on my specific vehicle, it tells you what refri uh, refrigerant and how much refrigerant to, to use to refill your AC. And our use, ours uses one, R1234YF. So if your specific model requires R1234YF, you're going to need this radiator, this more expensive radiator. It's the Performance Radiator 1803 for $569. Um, so the issue was, the reason why we didn't get it off of the website initially was, we initially got this one. This one was in stock. We had no problem getting this. We obviously found out this was the wrong one. Our second attempt at purchasing the right radiator was this one here. Um, this one took several days to actually come in. They had to order it. And uh, we quickly realized that this was not the correct radiator either. Either. So we finally found, <laughs> and again, this, this was my fault for not doing my due diligence. Uh, and actually reading and looking into it but then we realized that w this is the specific one we needed because our vehicle takes the R1234YF the only problem was we couldn't get this one it was gonna have to be delayed it was gonna have to be ordered and it was gonna take several days we were already uh, really needing the vehicle it needed to be uh, up and running again so we had to call around to our local dealerships and we found one that they had in stock and it was a lot pricier than this right here. So um, for the dealership or the OEM part number, I already put it in the video, um, but here is your um, aftermarket um, if, if you wanna get it from AutoZone for $569. So now if yours takes the, uh, the R134A, then you should be fine getting the standard cheaper radiator. So, um, you know, that's kind of something, this is a, a lesson that you need to really um, do your homework and do your due diligence to uh, make sure you're getting the proper uh, part or radiator for, th for this matter. Because the nor I I'm, I'm telling you guys, sometimes we get into a hurry. This, that's what I was. I was in a hurry. I just went on to the, put my vehicle information in right here. And um, these were the parts that fit normally um this doesn't happen normally you can choose your uh your brand whether you want duralast whether you want uh, osc or whether you want a performance radiator to give you more performance so to speak um but it wasn't until i realized that ours was a um, ours took a specific radiator just because it takes r1234yf so that's kind of interesting uh, I'm sure this happens quite often. This is the first time I've actually ran into um, this issue like this where a vehicle needs a specific part due to something else in the vehicle, uh, at least that I didn't catch. Uh, I've caught some other stuff in the past, but this was the first time that it actually got me and I did not catch it. So anyway guys, hopefully that explains um, that explains some stuff and if your specific vehicle takes the R1, uh, 1234YF, you're definitely going to need that more expensive radiator. That way you guys can get it right off the bat and you know what you're getting. So anyway guys, um, just, uh, just some food for thought right there. Just some um, information. Hopefully this helps. And uh, when you're looking at a radiator for at least your Durango, not sure what years are affected by this. Uh, but at least for the 2015 Durango, this is um, this is something you need to look out for. So anyway, guys, there you have so, it. As always, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you guys would like to be notified when I put out another video, make sure to hit that bell notification. And as always, guys, please subscribe to my channel for more informational videos and DIY projects. And as always, guys, until next time, have a good one.